we are going to continue on this idea uh, of uh, talking and working on blended finance solutions. And we're going to see that our first case, including a, a large commercial bank or Ben Paper IVA, we have seen different type of factors and we're trying to uh, actually talk or, or look about the, the full spectrum when we're talking about impact investing. So before we start, just to make sure we're all in the same page, I want to make sure you you know what it means to talk. I know we have some specialists and some of the participants are not. So really when we talk about blended finance, uh, the WEF defined when blended finance as the use of catalytic capital from public or philanthropic sources to increase private sector investment in developing countries, and especially to finance the, the financial gap that we have uh, to achieve the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. So we have seen uh, in these webinars, and we talked to Fabio Segura from the Jacob Foundation, so we see how philanthropic capital can work also to attract private capital, and we are gonna include other type of solutions today and, and talk to uh, to, to Pierre that has so generously given us his time today to to talk about precisely about blended finance. Uh, I'm we, from the LEA Center for of Social Innovation. We had Patrick Breitbart also. There is a research fellow there. We're doing some research because we precisely think that blended finance through the de-risking and funding derived from private and pli private sectors we really believe can be one of the very promising solutions to accelerate and scale the investment on social innovation or an impactful new solutions to social and environmental problems. So I think corporates know how to uh, finance innovation, but how can we do that at scale and for grand challenges? Uh, I think it's, it's still uh, an unsolved problem and there are many uh, interesting solutions. And I think this idea of blended finance incorporates many different things. And, I, and we are going to talk uh, with Pierre today uh, on one, one very specific uh, solution. And if you remember, uh, if you were here already in some of these webinars, we define impact investments as investments made with intention to generate positive and measurable social income. So we need an intentionality, we need an objective uh, or a purpose. Uh, behind that investment and that impact has to be measurable and also we need to have the expectation of financial return. So we also included this idea sometimes and not all the impact investment but the, the additionality is that a certain outcome wouldn't have happened without this investment uh, coming into place and I think blended finance precisely can show how can uh, projects or investments uh, that look too risky in the past can work by combining different actors to actually make it happen. Now, so we are going to use this a little bit with an agenda and we are going to talk very specifically about the purpose, the additionality and these uh, different issues um, with, with Pierre today. And I want to... Um, I, I showed this poll to Pierre and he, he said, this is a very academic and a little complicated. So I know, so I will help you to do this. I will open a poll because I want to know a little bit your opinion. So I just launched uh, the poll, but this poll is asking you, think as if you were, many of you are, but just put yourself in a place of a large corporation. You're looking to finance a, a, a development of a new plantations to source raw materials. You had in the past problems with NGO, with public opinions, because you were not sourcing, you were not transparent, or you were not uh, sourcing your, your raw materials uh, sustainably. And you are trying to work in an area that in the past was actually deforested, and you're trying to recover it for, for to work any meaningful and sustainable way to get your inputs. And you even maybe made a pledge that you were going to have 100% uh, sustainable materials in your value chain. So what strategy will you use if you know? And we are seeing now uh, after COVID crisis, we're talking about building back better and doing a green recovery. So many companies are realizing that they had to speed up the transformation. But how do you finance that? especially after a crisis and a slowdown. No. So 
let's look at the first option and you can read it yourself. You obviously have, but some of you, the first option is you seek uh, financing from local banks and private investors. You don't need to disclose it, so it's on your own and you, uh, uh, you use that money to finance uh, this project. The second one is you issue a note directly to the private market. So this you have to disclose, you commit to disclose it in your sustainability report. The third one is you do issue this note, but in order to guarantee it, you look at a development finance institution that's a DFI to cover your first losses. No? So you again disclose it in a sustainability report. C is the same that D, so you go to the public market, you get a DFI to support you as a first loss, but it's not only self-reported, you look at the third party, you look at an NGO or a UN to monitor independently, in, independently the impact. So uh, you, in case people think that you're profiting from public money or that you're greenwashing, or so you look at third party to do the monitoring. Part E is you use a structured finance, so you are in, already involved in a commercial bank or commercial investors, and to provide really a different risk return profiles uh, to investors, and you mix public financial and commercial money. And this also, you include NGOs and you, and, or UN organizations uh, to guarantee or to show or to monitor the sustainability. And F and G, F is, None of the above, you just made my life miserable. This poll is too complicated. Uh, none of the above because they are not attractive financial solutions for a corporate, for a business. Or G, none of the above because this is not realistic. How are we gonna put all these people together is absolutely crazy and actually too complicated, okay? And I'm gonna share the results so you can see. So we have 63% of the people actually chose the option of a structured finance. So we're good, yeah. We have lots of people interested <laughs> in our stuff. But still, we do have some people, if we, especially if we add together almost, you know, obviously the, the almost 40% or 37% that look at other solutions. And it's interesting, and we didn't see anybody that thinking that these were not viable or, or doable. Uh, doable solutions. So we are going to discuss how you do this because it may look pretty obvious or, or self-explanatory when you look at this, but really putting together this type of coalition has a lot of caveats, but a lot of potential. And I think uh, something interesting about having Pierre here is that he can bring, oops, sorry, uh, he can bring to us uh, a lot of the interesting solutions. Uh, without now any more uh, further ado, uh, just I want to. I met Pierre uh, Pierre Rousseau at the Peace Paris Forum in 2018, and it was the first one where uh, the what where he was actually uh, what it, the, the solution he's going to present today was featured, and it seems like a lifetime ago. And this year, uh, well, it also it was in February, but it, or in January, sorry, but it also looks like a life ago. We met at Davos with a group of people very interested on blended finance, especially uh, talking about a call for action of like-minded people that wanted to further solutions and look at the roadblocks and at the enablers of blended finance. And I think an interesting part for me uh, and our research at the LEA Center is how can we use these solutions to speed up corporate transformation around sustainability? So Pierre is a senior strategic advisor of Ben Pepper Iba in sustainable business and he leads the global sustainable finance initiative investment initiative he has more than three decades of experience in financial services and two-thirds of the time he spent in the nation pacific and he was the head before the current position of global markets in asian pacific in addition to a supervising the financial institution coverages unit so he has these different lenses i think in his in the in his work and uh, he also was the head of equity Asia and Pacific at Ben Pepper Equity Cash and Equity Derivative Platform. So he really looks at ben Blender Finance with a holistic view and a part that sometimes he publicizes a lot less, but in his professional uh, life, he's also an entrepreneur and he also supports a lot of entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurial projects and circular e economy projects such as nomadic plastic. 
and he also helps to raise funds for NGOs uh, like Room to Read in uh, Room to Read and in Hong Kong Sunshine Action. So really, a very committed person to the sustainability cause, uh, and I'm extremely happy and thankful uh, to have him here. So just to to leave him talking because I have talked too much already. So. We talked about intentionality and about purpose. What are the objectives of, can you tell me what are the objectives of the collaborative financial initiatives you're working on that you're gonna present here? Yeah, thank you, uh, Vanina. And thank you and uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody, depending where you are. So I'm quite pleased here to present you what has been one of the first transaction blended finance, which has been issued by a commercial banks. So there are many others now. Uh, blended finance is a very large is a very large concept, and um, for the people who wants to get very detailed information and more information, uh, I will recommend to go uh, and to look at the OECD um, documentation, which is pretty detailed about uh, blended finance. And many institutions today do consider uh, in the world that blended finance will be the way to finance the the transition, or what we call the transformation. I, th I think it's more a transformation than a transition mm -hmm. for going forward and adapt to a business model when we have to integrate uh, both uh, digitalization, which is becoming important, but also sustainability. So here we will give you an example about, uh, about um, a collaborative uh, financing. That's the way we call it in BNP Paribas because the collaboration it's the key of everything. And what we try to do here, we try to leverage private finance for public good. And uh, the first idea is to mobilize uh, capital markets. So that's why we will issue a bond. And uh, we will finance a commercial project, which, which means that it, it's to make money, it's to make a return. That has been explained before by, uh, by Vanina, there is a return at the end, okay? But we will integrate environmental and social conditions an impact, and we will measure it. Measurement is a very important point. I noticed that this is something you have taken into account, and this is, and this is very important. And of course, this has been started, and then we, we start to implement that because most of the structure exists there for, for developing world, for developing country. But I can tell you that we start now to do projects also for, for, uh, for um, developed country, especially on regenerating farming uh, in, in Europe, for instance. I can, if we can, we can develop that. And the idea is really to target uh, climate change issues, biodiversity losses, and also inclusion. inclusion. So the three are linked together. I don't think today we can separate the three, and I think with COVID-19 is even more evident now that between the social, between the biodiversity and the climate change, there is a link and we need to take this into account. So the idea is to provide, uh, we can provide many different things. We can provide clean and, and reliable energy. We can work on the land, the landscape and farming. Uh, we, re we can rehabilitate at land and we will integrate more and more also the carbon emission, the carbon sequestration and the carbon offset. This is quite important. What is interesting here, and uh, before we move to the next step, I will, I will tell you a few concepts. Uh, if you have a, a basic knowledge of finance, you will see that when you make a loan by a bank uh, to a corporate in order to finance some things, it will involve the balance sheet of the bank and it will involve the balance sheet of the clients. So it means that it will impact immediately the finance and the return that you will make in the company and the shareholder of the two sides will, and the regulator for the bank will count that. So you are restricted by the fact that if you use a balance sheet uh, like that, uh, you, you will have a lot of constraints and cost. And then to finance a transition, if you have a lot of constraints and cost, financial cost is very difficult. When you do capital markets, you are not using the balance sheet of the bank because we will go to, to, to look for investors, but you are still using the balance sheet of the corporate and the corporate will be reliable on that. So it means that uh, it's also a lot of constraints. If you are a big agribusiness company and you want to, you want to solve the problem of the, the, not just buying the commodity straight, but you want to solve the problem on the ground. So that means you need to do 
a landscape financing. You need to finance something. Your shareholder will not be extremely happy to see that you are paying for the public good because they will say, why are you doing this uh, you, with my money? So uh, what is interesting is to find a solution where we will put everything out of the balance sheet of the client when the client will continue to be the sponsor. And we will see most of the time also it will be not only the sponsor, but it will be probably the off-taker also in the, in the project. So the purpose of what we do here, number one in blended finance, it's to take everything off balance sheet of the client, of the bank, to get the freedom to finance something which is larger than just the extracting of the commodities that normally we look at. So that's the first principle that you need to take into account here. So here, what we're doing here, uh, the first thing, uh, the platform, this kind of platform is pretty unique but because first you are not in the balance sheet of the client and you are not in the balance sheet of the, uh, you are not in the balance sheet of the, of the bank. And we will bring investor. The principle is to bring investor who will invest in a structure, let's call it an SPV, a special purpose vehicle, okay? So which will be off the balance sheet of the client. And what we will do, we will collaborate between public and private sector. That's the first thing that will happen here. We will continue to reward investor, okay? So the, the investor who will invest in that project will get the rate that normally we had in the commercial market, okay? We will, uh, we will uh, create uh, uh, a business which is commercially viable. So that means at the end there is an off-taker, there is a, a corporate who will off-take and buy and pay the price that normally is. We will guarantee and we will use the public money to guarantee the bonds that we will issue. Okay, that's the very important things. And we will integrate also all SDG or any kind of condition that is environmental and social at the same time as in the project. And what is important here is that we will try to get the balance between all the entities here in order to get the interest. So that means you cannot lead to that collectively. So, and what it means, it means that internally, uh, in an organization and externally, uh, we will put together different type of people which normally are not talking together, which are not working together. So that's the first thing. Let me explain now in, a, in two seconds, the structure itself, okay? So what do we do? We create, we take an SPV, and on the SPV, normally, we will issue a bond. In order to get that, so we will find the investors. But if you are an investor today, a large investor, because we do that for a large size project, the, the, the investor will say, oh, that's very good, but it's very risky. So the first things we need to do is risk. So for the direct seeing the bonds that we will issue, we will ask a uh, public uh, institution, NDBs, DFIs, depending depending the project, depending where you are, in order to guarantee part of it and to be the first loss of it. So that means the investor, the private investor, will feel more comfortable. What is interesting is that because, because the investor, the large investor came, other investor will come because they will feel comfortable. But those ones will be not guaranteed necessarily. So you have to know one thing in finance, which is good, is that money attracts money. So you will see that we will, by putting this, collecting more money, because there is one big structure that we put at the start. With this money in the SPV, we will put it in a trust, and after this will be allocated to the, to the project itself. Okay? At the same time, what we will do, we will have an offtake agreement. That means we need to bring the economic to the project. To bring the economic to the project, we need an off-taker. To have an off-taker, we, we, we do need to have somebody who will buy at a price, but under some environmental and social condition, the goods. Because that will bring the entire economic and will allow to reimburse at least the investor at the end through the, through the process that we put in place. And also, we will engage NGOs. We will engage other people in order to make the measurement. I will come back later to what we call the technical assistance, which is also very important when we put such kind of project. But commercially here, that's the structure. So financially speaking, the structure is very simple. What is very complex to put in place here is the overall collective agreement about what we want to achieve and how we want to achieve it 
because we need to integrate those SDG. So that means a project like this one here hit 12 SDG because you will see we are financing a platform and I will come later on the description of the project. Since you mentioned and you show how we get the return and how we get the return or we get private investors involved, you know, how and, and this key of putting the coalition or the group of together is uh, bringing multiple stakeholders around this purpose or around this idea of the, the SDGs. Uh, how, uh, what kind of impacts are the financial facilities delivering? So what kind of impacts do you have uh, in, in the facilities you're talking about? So practically, uh, what we can have, we can have many different impacts. So here, and um, I don't think I will go all in details, but what you have to understand by putting such project, what we do here, we are putting, we are putting together, we are putting together a landscape. So that means we will be able to mix things like agriculture, for instance, with energy. So we can do better productive agriculture on one side. Uh, and so we will take this into account. On the other side, with the biomass, we will generate electricity. So we can bring also at the same on the same project, we can put together the two. We do see, by the way, that, that uh, in many cases, there is a lot of things happening between agriculture and energy. You know? There is an interaction which is growing and we can generate additional, uh, additional cash flow out of that. Then after we will address pollution issues, we will add that biodiversity uh, protection. Through the same project, we can also address uh, landscape protection. We can have uh, improvement of live woods. Uh, we can bring also restoration of land. We have project when we do restore uh, degraded land and we can restart and recreate new businesses out of that. What is important is that um, in that type of project, we are revisiting the way that you interact between the production and the distribution. So it means the whole supply chain may need to and could be transformed. But because you have a transformation of your supply chain and you had and you link your supply chain to condition which are environmental and social condition, and you rethink about everything by uh, creating uh, additionality, and this is what is important here, then you will see that in terms of profitability, you will get a better profitability on the long term. Cecilia, and this, this yeah, is the fact that you are not yeah. looking at every single piece by silo. You are starting to think on a landscape basis. That's why we, we call it also landscape project. Uh, Cecilia, one of the participants is asking, and I think you can clarify, I, I know with the example will come, be more clear, but what do you mean by off-taker? And I think since a lot of people are corporates here, that idea of off-taker from the corporate side can be interesting for them. If oh, you can. No, no, no. An yeah. off-taker is somebody who will buy the goods. Like for instance, uh, I give an example, uh, a Danone, a Nestle, they're buying, they're, buying, uh, they're buying sugar, they're buying palm oil, they're buying... Uh, they're buying uh, all kinds of commodities. So that's an off-taker. An electricity company is buying electricity <laughs> so, and power. So the off-take is to buy the goods. So somebody buying a good. So you can apply it to any kind of cases. Here, if we talk about agriculture, it's mainly buying the commodities. So in the project we have here, we talk about Michelin. Michelin is the off-taker. And it will off-take the rubber. And it, the rubber will be produced on the condition that no deforestation, no childhood labor, no pesticide. Uh, but there will be also in the project, and I will explain later, an area that will be protected, etc. So, but at the end, he commit himself to buy all the goods, and so, and sometimes at a certain price, and also at a certain quality. Right. So can you tell us more about the collaboration? And This is the key. At the beginning, you will put together people who will try to find the solution. Mm -hmm. And this is what is interesting here, is that you have different players. Here you can see you have UNEP, uh, you have Agroforestry uh, Center, what we call ICRAF. Those people normally, they used to work together. And then after that, you have ADN Capital, which is a, which is a foundation. Uh, it's a, it's in fact is a is a is an asset manager, but it's also a foundation. So that's really uh, normal. Those people working together, 
And suddenly, what do you have? You have a bank, a financial, a financial commercial banks. And what, what the role of here? Everybody has his role. Mm. In the agroforestry, the agroforestry people define they are there for the technicity. The UNEP is there for the validation of the credibility of the project. ADM Capital is here to implement what we call the technical assistant, and we are the financial advisor. So it's by putting all those people together that we will, and this is what I want to do, that the TLFF is not BNP Paribas. TLFF is the combination and the combination of the four who decided to sign an MOU and to work together on this. Okay, that's, that's extremely important that the people do understand. Then after that, we will bring additional player on that. They will be corporate, they will be multinational, they will be NGOs, they will be a national development bank, they will be uh, every type of people and including in private investors. And so what we do need, we do need to have all those people agreeing, agreeing about the objective and the how. Not only the what, but also the how. And the most difficult part is that. Um, just to give you an idea, the person in charge of uh, UNEP uh, who was really leading this, um, this project told me one day that we have exchanged something around 11,000 emails all together when we were working on setting up the project. <laughs> so it means that this is, where the, this is where the work is. The finance after that and the implementation, uh, it's very straightforward because there we come to finance product. Good. So what are the key roles, if you think, that the different partners can play? And because putting together, as you say, is, is quite complex and is to make it work. Uh, you mentioned some, no? But so just I said to that have... the, partnership, the partnership is, and, and you need to have a process. It's also very important. Uh, there is two things here. There is partners and roles. But if you want to do that, and, and we learn over the years. We, we need also to work and, and work in terms of process. First of all, you need to identify and source. Okay, so this is what we did uh, with ADM Capital. And after that, we work with our clients. So it's very important because at the beginning, you need to find somebody. And one of our clients was a vision. And, and then we have to write a concept note. And then after that, we need to go to a proof of concept here. Because we were pretty clear in the concept note, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't get the pilot. Sometimes we may do also piloting. So there is a preparation and an identification work to be done. And this is really the way we work together here between UNEP, ADM, Capital, and, and, and the corporate here we talk about. Michelin. Okay. Then, then after that, you need to find who are the, who are the people who will come uh, as investors and who are the people who will come as... Um, as a as a um, as a as a guarantor, but before that, we have to define because you cannot engage the, the client if we if you have not defined exactly all the conditions. So there, it means that all the group we are, we start to work together about the CSR and the condition because that's the impact and the level of impact is what will be the level and the motivation. Why? Because the risk return will be a classic in the market risk return. So, of course, you may have small bips there and there, but what will make the difference of the product is not that you are cheaper or, or less cheaper by a few bips in terms of products that you think. It's the quality of the impact that you will generate. And the additionality is not in the risk return because we are at market. The additionality will be at the level of the impact. This is where the sustainability expert will work. And then after that, when you have defined that, you have a level three where everybody starts to work on uh, financial structure. And then we, then we define the, the, the level of risk uh, and then we involve all the investors. So that means you, have, you can see here that you have the community of the corporate and the investors which are starting closing to finalize the product. So the gap between investors and the gap between uh, corporates is getting closer and closer and smaller. And the banks like us, we are playing more and more intermediary role. And after that, we have to do the structuring, the distribution. And as a bank, we are, we are using all the tools of distribution. What we have done, uh, we have structured a product. Uh, we have advice, we have structured a product. 
Uh, after that, we did warehouse the product also because when the product is issued, there is still a lot of due diligence to be done by different banks. So consequently, uh, we keep it in our books. Uh, and the role of the MDBs also here, it's important of the public, uh, the public sector is really to de-risk. So when you have such products, what, what you're doing, what it allows us to do? Instead to remain, you know, focused and locked in your balance sheet, like I mentioned before, it allows you to accelerate some process. We have accelerated here an investment process and, and action at the Michelin level and the East Plantation. Secondly, we scale. We're talking about 100 million. We're talking about, uh, and this, this transaction was 95 million, but we have other transactions which now are around 200, even some billion transactions. So we scale. The second, the second big things we're doing is we de-risk. There is a de-risking part. So that's the purpose. So at least we, we allow to finance the transition. And third, we optimize the funding. So at the end, the cost of funding of that project will be acceptable. And that's the three things that this kind of blended finance will allow to do. We have many people asking for, for this specific example. And I think the Tropical Landscape Facility, uh, If we, let's go into more detail, because I really think it, it represents a very innovative use of bonds in blended finance. And, and it, as you mentioned, this was the first issue and, uh, of a corporate sustainable bond in Asia. And we had last week a speaker talking how difficult it is to get impact investing going on in Asia, and it also was the first sustainable bond for nation uh, for the Asian the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. You no, know? so uh, unlike a green bond or a sustainability bonds, uh, the funds of this transaction are going directly to a single project, you no, know, and and with a corporate route. So, can you tell us more about what is uh, what makes this project such a pioneering project, and and can you? Uh, because I think we have a lot of people asking about uh, to go into the example. Okay, so uh, here, um, first of all, we have two ways to do blended finance. And um, I think this one was the most traditional way that was done in the commercial banks, which is to, which is to issue a structure bond. So this is what we have to do. These are structure project bonds. So that's what we, you remember what I told you, is that uh, normally you, 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 we issue, a, we issue a, a, an SPV, and this SPV will issue a, a bond, and a bond which is related to one project. The project here was very simple. It was to rehabilitate the land in order to do plantation of, uh, to do plantation of a rubber tree. And it was in the middle of nowhere, in the jungle, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Indonesia. And the idea was not to do additional deforestation. It was to protect the environment, especially that we are between the, the project is between the cities on one side and you have the jungle on the other side. And, and we wanted also to play the role of buffer. So one part of the land will be allocated to, be, to be, become a buffer and we will be rebuilt it as a jungle to make sure that it will be in between the plantation, the city, and on the other side, the... Um, uh, the, the, the primary jungle. So the idea is really to, to, to that everybody come and play a role, as I mentioned before. Uh, and also we need to have a proper governance here. So that's why we put in place uh, a structure when we can monitor the governance and make sure that everything which is committed is, uh, is implemented. And this is extremely important to have that governance because you need to make sure that uh, at least there is a party, and this is what the role of UNEP here in order to monitor and what we were doing there. And after that, we need also to make sure that we define really that there is a social impact and the social impact is really implemented and part of the project. That will be the role and the facility, the facility manager will be done by ADM Capital. And last but not least, what we did, as I mentioned before, we were really the structuring of the product. So the one who put in place all the financial structure, but everybody together agree and, 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 and define on the way and the content of the transaction. Okay. So if we, um, if we are moving on that here, we have issue a bond, okay, which was pretty defined on a project uh, to, a, to a plantation. Uh, the bond is issued, and this is very important, this bond is issued by... Uh, by the SPV, and after the loan, we have made a loan to the plantation. 
here there is no, in this one the transaction is very simple because is um, there is no small holders. Sometimes when we have a transaction with small holders, it's even more complicated because we will put we will we will make a loan to a trust, and after the trust, we'll probably spread the money to the different actors. And then we need to have another platform, which is the way that we finance the farmers. So this is the most this is a little bit more complicated when you have a small holders. But here, the transaction, the first one was pretty straightforward because it's between it's directly the loan to the plantation. And here we were talking about uh, 88,000 of hectares. So just for people to realize the size, it's more as uh, the size of Singapore. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the land. So just, and what is very important is that a big part of it will be kept for community livelihood and conservation. So there is a role of conservation about the village there, about the people. And this is why next to the commercial, next to the commercial, um, next to the commercial uh, project, we have created what we call a technical assistant or a grant trust. And the grant trust has been uh, funded by philanthropists. So I never talk to philanthropists because at the end of blended finance, it's a PPP, which means philanthropist, um, private and public. And here, there have been a philanthropist uh, uh, through a company, uh, through a blended finance provider uh, of philanthropy, which is called Convergence, a, a, a Toronto-based company, who provide us 20 million of uh, technical assistance. And the 20 million will be for maintaining uh, the 40, 45,000 hectares of land and conservation. So because conservation need to be, need to be funded. It was also to provide uh, assistance to the communities, the school, hospital, because they were, you, this, this here, we will bring job for 16,000 people. Okay, so the, the people need to come with the family around. So they need, we need to create uh, the surroundings to make sure that the people will live properly. Because one of the main purpose also to have this project is to guarantee the basic needs to all the people who are part of this project. So when we implement one of the main conditions here is that all the workers will have access to all basic needs. Uh, normally, we, we, we use the definition of United Nations, but we go a little bit further than that because uh, we do believe it's still not enough. But at least means access to access to food, access to access to uh, home, access to um, health, access to energy. Uh, and today, even as a basic need, so United Nations defined that internet is an access of mm -hmm. a basic need. So access to communication is becoming one too. So we need to make sure we need to make sure that uh, we provide this. Okay, and the fund, the fund will be allocated to make all this program. And of course, Michelin commit himself to buy back all the rubber that will be. And just for you to, to know about the story, this rubber is so high quality that we can price it a little bit higher than uh, normally it's been planned. But on top of that, this rubber will be made for special tires that will be used for racing because uh, they are very special. So, And do they, so I think, we, they also provide a... Um, Technology and ways to make more productive in this land. No, if I if I'm not wrong or okay. So yeah. the technology and things and the improvement of productivity is productivity. brought by ECRAF. So the, ECRAF. By the specialist in ECRAF, right. as I mentioned before, is a is a specialist of uh, agroforestry. So we will develop techniques. ECRAF is developing techniques which which uh, which brings uh, uh, and which help. Um, development development of uh, the trees without chemicals, uh, completely natural, but also by bringing techniques that will improve uh, productivity. And those techniques sometimes involve technology. And, and people don't have to confuse that technology and traditional way to do right. The combination of technology and and uh, and uh, the traditional way also to plant and to cultivate, it's a it's a nice combination because it improves tremendously productivity. Normally, and, uh, that also thing is, also I'm I want sorry. to add that there is a uh, there is a lot of things in terms of soil quality of soil. So 
the people measure the soil, uh, water usage. So I think the program will reduce also the usage of water. <laughs> Uh, so there is a whole a combination of things. Again, we are thinking about the landscape program. We have a question from Novel that is asking, could you give us some example of incentive, if any, that we could expect from the local government or those that are taking blended finance as opposed to conventional financing? Uh, because I think a player that we didn't mention now is the local government, and I know it is involved in this, in yes. this facility. You know? This is yeah. a good question. So when you do a project like that, uh, you don't come and uh, you don't come. And first of all, you need to have a approval, and you need to involve the federal government. In Indonesia, it's also very important to involve them. But after, you need to work with the local government. Why? Because first of all, you bring job for people. So that means it's a, it's a, it's something which is uh, extremely uh, important. So that means this will involve local local people, but also you may use some incentive that we will put in the financing program. So we may have uh, uh, some sub some subsidy that they receive. We also in some program may transform some subsidy that has been given to another subsidy. Like for instance, uh, I give you an example. We may use the subsidy that has been allocated for farmers for chemical uh, fertilizer, and we may we may use this uh, and say we stop to use fertilizer. So we use the subsidy to finance the transition through the model. We have not done that here. We have done it somewhere else, but that's also the way you can be involved with local government because we may use some money from the old world in the new world. I'm just giving you some thoughts here, but can you imagine that in the world today, the World Bank report that uh, there is 800 uh, billion of money which is bringing subsidy in, agri in agribusiness, out of which 350 billion for subsidy chemical fertilizer. And I'm not talking about the billions of money which is used today by local and, and uh, government, like including in Indonesia before, because it's changing now, in order to subsidize fossil fuel. So here we're talking about trillions of money. So today that money can be used to fund the transition. So we yeah, can I'm use that money in order to help the transition and we will incorporate that into the program. And we are seeing a, a big discussion going on precisely of companies that are getting help and subsidy if post-COVID crisis, we should shy away precisely from fossil fuels and actually put the money where the money where it can speed up this transition. So yeah, I so think this sense. will become even faster than, than in the past. This existed, but it will be hopefully faster than in the past. Can you give, tell us a little bit about the tranches and how you cater it and so here you can see that yeah. uh, you we divide it uh, this in different tranches you can imagine you see immediately uh, uh, for people who are familiar on issuance of bonds that uh, we have the tranche a and the tranche a it's mainly it's mainly for investors which are high quality investors here it has been a, it's been a, an insurance company would take it it's a triple a it's a triple A because it's been guaranteed by uh, here at US head, which is a DFI. And you can see that it's, a, it's 30 million. So it's one third of the overall, uh, overall, uh, the overall uh, issuance. And of course, the rate is in line with the market. But of course, because it's a triple A, uh, the market at that time was around 4.1. So, and this is very important. Why the insur insurance know that that in their books so for 15 years, when you know that uh, insurance have normally exposure to 15 to 20 years, so for the investor itself here, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic uh, uh, usage because they have no uh, high sustainable with 12 SDG uh, asset in their, in their books. Uh, and this is protecting and probably covering uh, the exposure of the premium that they have on the other side. So Lemant is asking here about the AAA rating. Uh, how was it possible to achieve a AAA rating for a class A notes? And because it's guaranteed by the public and the US Ed is a AAA. So um, you have fifty percent uh, coverage by USAID. You know? yeah. yeah, that's the that's the that part. Hey, is the one which has been covered by uh, public money. So this is the de-risking part. So this is mm -hmm. why a, an insurance company to be aligned with the investment policy 
could come in. And then you can have also, and other people like pension funds, sovereign fund may be interested by that because they have the first risk of US ed, not the risk of the project here. Yeah. Because normally this kind of project is unrated normally. And after that, what we did, we rated the, the Moody's because you can see we are using Moody's rating. And after that, the other, the other part of the bonds that we issue has been, has been made, you see, you have another 15 years, which has been taken by a green type of fund bonds and specialized green fund. But after that, we have five and seven years, which has been taken by, uh, we, which has been taken by, um, by uh, wealth management people. And uh, the, this is the surprise we had at that time when we issued that bonds, is that a lot of people from wealth families and uh, family offices and uh, private banking clients were highly interested. And why those people are interested? Because they know that they have been uh, before uh, long dated uh, bonds, which has been issued and which has been guaranteed and that uh, specialized people, either a green fund or insurance company have been invested in. in. So they came as an additional investor and of course, you can see they have an interesting they have an interesting rate, okay? Uh, and so they feel comfortable that they, they have zero guarantee, but they feel comfortable because they do see that part of the project has been guaranteed and other people have been doing the due diligence of it. What is also reinsuring the people is the B2, because you can see at the B2, you have the sponsor equity. So that means uh, the, the sponsor itself, which is here is Michelin, Decided, decided to issue a convertible and uh, put equity on it. So that's also reinsuring the people. So by putting a structure together, all different type of investor, so you create, a, you, you create a puzzle of investors with different needs, but because you have created the day risking one, it's attracting the other one. Because you have the equity from the sponsor, the people feel comfortable. They say this project, the people will put their own money on it. So that means they believe on it. So was this a one of a kind uh, situation? Or, or I know I actually know that there is a second bond issuance for 120 million going on. But other than that, what other projects are you working on? What has been changing? What are the learnings? What are the new things that you're doing after this, the, the TLFF? Okay. So after that one, um, we, we didn't get for a while project. Why? For different reasons. Because this one has been a straightforward project and has been done and has been created opportunistically. So it has not been really made to be uh, distributed industrially. So it's, the, it's, the, it's some people, entrepreneurial, we decided to make it happen. And, uh, and uh, at the time, I was uh, the head of um, capital market in uh, a global market in Asia. And I said, this is innovative. We have to look. We have to allocate some time on it, etc." So it's an opportunistic. Uh, and after that, we wanted to make it more structural. But then we discovered that there are a lot of things to take into account and it took us a little bit of time in order to address them. And I can tell you what were the main issues we found out after that. When we have to talk about, uh, when we have to involve smallholders, which is the majority of the case, because we have to remind that majority of uh, the food is, is still produced by smallholders. And uh, we talk about, if we talk in quantity, it's between 25 to 40%, depending what kind of commodity we talk about. So when we, it's more complex. So we had to put in place the way to finance it, the way to connect the international finance on the way to finance individual farmers. So this requires an additional structure to be built in place. We have put it in place. Now we have that. And it works mainly by cooperating with local banks or local financial players. It's not always banks. We will discover in some country like in Philippines or in India, you have a financial organization that can play the role of the banks also. So that's what, number one. Number two, legal. The documentation was a huge constraint here. Uh, documentation like this one is 700 pages of document. Mm. It's available. If you want to have access to the documentation, it's public because the transaction is listed on the Singapore exchange. If you ask the TLFF, the, the Tropical Landscape uh, Project, you can have access to the Prospectus, you will see the prospectus is 700 plus plus pages. Mm. It's very complex. And each situation is a different situation. So we had to find a way to uh, 
I don't say automize because we don't talk about automizing, but uh, to to uh, to make less uh, heavy the documentation side. Then after that, we discover another important problem. We are using NGOs um, mm -hmm. in order to validate independently the condition, and that's part of the TA. And I have not discussed yet about the role of the TA. And this is also where we were not prepared. Uh, there we have a very simple technical assistant. The technical assistant that we need to build is quite important because the technical assistant will help you to prepare and to have fun to prepare the project. But you will also, it's important because this is where you will measure the impact. So you need to, you need to have people who will measure the impact. You need the people who will verify the condition. And after that, you will have also all the role of assistance or complementary assistance, like uh, if you need to build a road or if you need to do something which is related uh, on, the, on, the, on the site. So this is, we were not well prepared also. This has also to be organized. And you need also to organize the way to collect the fund to fund all this and to find the right partners. At the beginning, we discovered that to take a partners like that and pick up an NGO and put in them is not as straightforward. You need, they're not fully educated and they don't have necessarily all the means to make what they have to do. And when we talk about finance here, we talk about serious things. We need to be disciplined and we need to be extremely precise on the measurement and the commitment that we have done because we have to make sure we can measure it and we have to make sure that we can follow the condition and make sure that we don't fall apart. And for that, let me you ask can, you, you a cannot, question here that Anne is asking. Yeah, we finish this because yes. it's important sorry, to sorry. understand. Yeah. Uh, and here it's important that to realize that the NGOs don't have, the, all of them don't have necessarily the tools and the technical tools. So we had to invest in data and we mm -hmm. have to find fintech partners in order to provide the tools. So today we are working, for instance, with, uh, with Herbus. Uh, uh, in order to um, in order to uh, provide a system of satellite uh, which is providing the, su the surveillance electronically without having people on the ground. And we discover also that we need partner in terms of uh, agroforestry. So we had ICRAF, but ICRAF is a big organization. So we need to work with non-profit organization. And then we make an agreement now with Earthworm, which is one of the largest non-profit organization based in Switzerland. So it means that if you want to build a project like that, uh, at that time, you see the level of collaboration you need to put in place is even bigger. So we need to increase it today. And this takes us a while to do that. And then after that, we need to install this as a process within the organization as a bank because we have a regulator and we need to make sure that those transactions mm -hmm. can be accepted by the different regulators. So in, in the other side, and I think Anne is asking about smallholder farmers and about the trust, but in, in general, uh, I wanted to, uh, I, I, I want, like, we had a couple of questions. How can we ensure that the money actually gets from the trust to the smallholders? Or how can you get all these other players also to trust the bank and the private sector? Because we had these different mindsets that are playing the same collaboration. And I think we're almost at the end so I ask you these questions and some takeaways that can inspire people to do more of these things because they are possible and we are working on that. And what do you think should be the learnings and the takeaways? So very quickly from the small farmers to make sure the money comes back is that it's organized. First of all, we put together a structure and process, uh, mixing also uh, NGOs on the ground who are close to the, 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 the farmers. And so that means all farmers are follow up. Uh, we use more and more technology also. We do have a system and platform for, for farmers that we develop. So more and more the banking from farmers is coming from a financial platform that has been built uh, in order to follow the cash flow that those people are using uh, in and out. So there is a lot of things happening there. So, But keep in mind that all the money is going to a trust. So the trust is uh, guaranteeing and following up everything. What I would like to explain here and, and what is key in this kind of um, project, number one, uh, it's, it's a collective project. So the, collect, the collaboration is key. So if, don't believe you will do that type of project alone. So it's a, it's a collection. It's a collection. So, so the collaboration and partnership is ex essential internally, your own organization, but also in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, collaborating with people that normally we don't use. Um, 
Before that, I never worked with NGOs uh, on the financial projects. So today, uh, I'm, I'm, I have all projects involve NGOs and philanthropists and people that I never worked with. And now I'm familiar to work with United Nations, which, uh, and I can tell you, those people don't run down the same, the same speed we're running. So <laughs> uh, it's not always fun, fun, so easy to, to align everybody. The second thing important, we are not creating new product. We are creating financing scheme and solution. So we have a toolbox and we are taking the toolbox we have in finance, but not only in bank alone, we are taking the toolbox from different sources and different sources of funding, uh, combining asset management, combining insurance, combining different different practice, uh, project finance, capital markets. So it's, it's really by creating across a transversal toolbox and we, we use tools that normally we don't put normally together. So that's very important. Then after that, we have to think long term. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not short term. So this is one of the big problems is that we have to start in finance, not to look always at the short term. And some mechanisms today doesn't help to do that. Or regulator first is very short term uh, focused. Uh, the, the way that the corporates have to report their result is very short-term focused. So we need we need to get out of the debt, and for that it means that we need to take we need to take and we need to build scenarios. I'm sure a few of them here are familiar with the TCFD. TCFD is about uh, scenarios thinking. Uh, so that means we need to start to think more and more about future scenario. So we need to think about the future. We need to measure and report the impact. So that means we need data. It's important to have data. So digitalization and sustainability are complementary. They are not opposed. Okay. So we need more and big data management and digitalization is key in order to implement sustainability. Then after that, you need also to be able to provide scale. And also, you know, when you provide scale, scale you need also to manage risk. The risk is higher. So we need we need to we and the risk coming forward in finance will be higher and higher. So we need to have the risking. We need to have scale. So we need to be able. And last but not least, we need to be fully transparent. So today it's, it's not a black box. You know, you you need to understand everything is visible. All conditions are available. Everything is available. People can follow the measurement. So if you don't if you don't be transparent, you will never get the trust. So this is why it's important to have all this point and at least try to make sure that at the end, um, it's about what? It's about reallocating capital on the right purpose. Okay, so we are moving capital from one. So it's a capital allocation process. Digitalization and data is critical. This is one of the main weaknesses. And development of partnership is the key thing. So that's the three main drivers that you need to keep in mind. Great. Thank you so much. Your time flies when you're having fun. It's already uh, 1 p.m. here. Uh, so we, we have, I know that you're building a, a fund, not a bond, a big fund, and we'll invite so you again, over it's again not, it's not, to uh, tell us I, about the fund. <laughs> so it's another group of people. So just to say, and I'm quite happy to come, uh, this is still a work in progress. Normally this fund should be uh, normally... Um, uh, uh, see live uh, in June. First, it's done in uh, it's done again in your country in Switzerland with Swiss uh-huh. partner. So it's R20, which is the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, Foundation, which has been the, the sponsor of this one. So you see here, the sponsor is a um, is a is a is an NGO. Uh, BNP Paribas is a partner uh, as a as a custodian and the clearer of this fund. This is a one billion US dollar fund. Uh, which will start at 750 at the beginning, which will be blended by 150 million. Normally, this is not fully agreed yet, but it will be by the Green Climate Fund, normally subject to their approval. Uh, so it means, and it will be uh, dedicated all over the emerging market in the world to, pro- to finance projects that normally are not financed uh, because they are between 5 to 20 million about mm-hmm. energy access, lightning, and waste to energy in small cities and regions. And uh, we have already uh, quite a number of projects on this one, and uh, it will be a, a combined of debt uh, and private equity fund, and it will be open for uh, professional investors. Uh, we have already some of them who have committed money on it. Um, 
What is interesting also that the other partners are IUCN, uh, which mm -hmm. is also Swiss based, which yeah. is providing uh, biodiversity uh, mm -hmm. and uh, who is managing the technical assistance. We have Gold Standard also, which is part of it, which will be the measurement of the different uh, impact, uh, which is also Swiss based because mm -hmm. they're based in Zurich. So um, it's a it's a project that will be it will be the first largest blended fund uh, that will be. So created. you have to promise that you're going to come back in June <laughs> after well, the launch. I'll come to... back later on uh, to explain this one. Exactly. This one will be. This one is another way. Uh, we talk here today about the structure project bonds. Uh, this is another way also to do blended finance. So, and there are many, many other ways that probably will be developed in the near future by mixing those uh, philanthropists, uh, private and public money. So thank you very much and thank you everybody for, for staying. And I hope you got inspired and uh, you can contact Pierre through LinkedIn or you can contact me at the LEA Center or LinkedIn to continue the conversation. I know there were a lot of questions about specific and different issues if you were working in Africa, if you if it could be started by startup, by other issues. Uh, and sadly, I couldn't get all the questions in, but uh, happy to, to stay in touch. And from the LEA Center, our idea is precisely to work as a venue to put all these players together. And we are very happy to, to be collaborating here with you and doing Thank some you. research. And we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you, Anina. You. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.